So we all know that um, logic circuits require decoupling capacitors and uh, the idea is that you put them as close as possible to the uh, VCC and ground pins to try and uh, eliminate noise and uh, problems like that. But I wanted to try and demonstrate what coupling is. What's the process, that? what's the thing that we're trying to actually avoid, trying to prevent? So um, I've set up two 555 oscillators here, they're actually 7555s, which are the CMOS variety, and they're completely separate circuits. They're only connected together by the red and black VCC and ground lines, but otherwise they're entirely separate. And uh, I've put two scope probes on the two outputs, and I've put them on my dual trace oscilloscope. So let's see what happens first with the uh, decoupling capacitors, which are the big green ones, in place, fitted to the circuit. So the oscilloscope is uh, set to trigger on the upper trace, the red trace, and as you can see we've got a reasonably uh, stable square wave there. And then the lower trace is the second oscillator, the right-hand oscillator, and uh, as you might expect it's uh, running at a different frequency. It, it, it's as close as I could get it to be the same as the red one, but let's see if we can get it a bit closer. That's the wrong way, and that's the wrong way. So, I mean, there's no way I can get those... Oh, well, perhaps I can, but... In most cases, the second oscillator is running at whatever frequency it wants, and it's not connected to the first oscillator. There is a little bit of coupling there, even with the decoupling capacitors. But see what happens if I take the decoupling capacitors out. So now I've removed the two big green decoupling capacitors. And what we're getting now is really the opposite situation. I've got a job to uncouple these two circuits. They're locking themselves together. You can see that although I'm only triggering on the red one, the yellow trace is locked to it. And I'll just try adjusting that. And all that's happening is they're kind of distorting and moving but remaining locked together. And you're getting some really strange effects because you're getting um, false triggering where one uh, trace will go high for a long pulse and then you get a short pulse and it's happening on both. And they're kind of interfering with each other and affecting each other's uh, frequency and pulse width. And I mean, these are free running oscillators. They should be um, just running freely with a fixed pulse width. You shouldn't be getting one long pulse and one short pulse. But I've got a heck of a job to actually try and uncouple these. And that's the point. They're coupled together. There we are. I've managed it now. That's uncoupled. But at most settings of this potentiometer, they're just coupling together. And what's happening is that signals are... Um, well, what's happening is that um, the switching process is causing noise on the VCC line or the ground, whichever way you look at it, and it's causing false triggering on the adjacent oscillator. They're not linked together in any way other than these power lines. There's enough noise fl uh, flowing across that the two oscillators are having a devil of a job not being linked together. They're almost completely linked together. So let's just have a look at it with the decoupling capacitors back in. So the decoupling capacitors are back in, and once again, the two oscillators are decoupled from each other. There's not a huge amount of linkage. There's a little bit. If I try to bring these two to a similar frequency, yes, there we are. I've just about coupled them. And you can see little jitters up on the first oscillator and little jitters on the second one. But at most positions, they are decoupled. So that's decoupling. Decoupling is so that one part of the circuit is not coupled to another part of the circuit through noise flowing through the power lines.